On this field, on October 26, 2007, Robert Quinn played the best game of his senior season at Fort Dorchester High School. Against rival Somerville, Quinn made six tackles, one and a half for loss. His future prospects were bright. Letters from virtually every major college in the country sat in a gym bag at the Quinn family home. I didn't know what to think, man. I was like, dude, you, you, you're blessed. I mean, you just don't know. You can go anywhere you want it, man. Look at this. I mean, we had a big duffel bag, I guess, full of, full of letters. Two days later, his senior season was over. His athletic future was in doubt, and teammates had assembled in the lobby of the Medical University of South Carolina Hospital to pray for their fallen teammate. God, it must have been the whole football team. It was good. At least 14 of the football players were there. Some of the parents were there. About 30 people. Everyone in Ladson, South Carolina, knew Robert Quinn. They had to. He was a two-time state wrestling champion, and that combination of size, speed, and strength made him one of the top football players in the region. So many letters were coming in the mail. I couldn't even, there was colleges everywhere. Sometimes we turned the ringer off. It just got real bad. Um, you know, we talked to some if we were interested. If not, I, I didn't bother. If I was tired, I just didn't talk to them. But during his senior season, something wasn't quite right. Man, nothing was right. That's just the way he was playing compared to, you know, uh, the way he was in the past. I mean, he was just simple tackles. You know, he'd be standing right there and the guy run right by him. I'm like, man, what is he doing? Started complaining about headaches. Wake up in the morning, he had a headache. You know, come home from school, he had a headache. Going to bed, he had a headache. And then his eyes, you know, were kind of changing colors. But then I started noticing things, you know, he just, forgetting to pay a ticket, you know, speeding, um, just forgetting everything. I'm like, my gosh, Robert, what's going on with you? The concerns were mostly speculation until one fall day at Fort Dorchester High. Damra Miller, who has known Robert since the fourth grade, is his longtime girlfriend. And he was coming out of class, and um, my class was further down the hallway, so I always saw him walking up ahead of me. He started stumbling, and then, um, I saw him kind of lean on the trash can, which he leaned on it so hard the trash can flipped, and that's when he fell at the same time and just hit the floor. His eyes were just rolled in the back of his head. It was so scary. I didn't know what to do. I just put it, um, I put his head in my lap and just waited for everybody to get there. An appointment was made for an MRI, but Robert missed it. Then, a few days later at his traditional post-game meal at Waffle House with Damra, it happened again. We were at Waffle House, we always go there after the games to eat, and um, he drove me home, and we stayed in we stayed in the car for a little bit talking, like we always do, and, and then when I walked to the door to leave, we always, you know, he always blows a kiss to me and I'll blow it back to him. We always do that when he leaves, always. And um, he just drove off, <laughs> and I was like, and then not only did he not blow the kiss to me, um, he took a right off my street instead of a left to go home. I guess I blacked out while I was driving. And I, you know, I, was, I was driving, but you know, I don't like, remember actually what was going on, so I'm blessed to just, you know, still be alive right now. I knew something was wrong, so I jumped in my Jeep and was driving around the whole neighborhood. I finally saw his headlights, and I don't know where he went. And he doesn't even know where he went. So I, I put the car, my car in front of him and I was like, oh, please stop, please stop. She like pulled her car in front of the car. I was driving with her lights on and like woke me up. I pulled into her yard and my mom came over and I was just like in shock because I, like, I didn't know what was going on. He just looked real confused and he didn't know, and he didn't know where he was or what was going on. He looked real scared. I said, Robert, what's going on? And he just kind of just fell on me like, Mama, I just don't know, crying like a little baby. He's heavy, you know, he's still, he's heavy. On a Sunday morning, too early for Robert to be awake, his parents heard one thud and then another. I guess about 4.30, 5.30 in the morning, I, I heard him when he got up and went to the bathroom. I just heard a thump and I got up and looked. You know, I just thought he just slipped and fell or something. I said, man, you okay? He said, yeah. And then all I heard was just a big old boom. That he passed out then. Of course, I grabbed him and shook him and said, man, you okay? What's going on? What's going on? He finally started coming to you, you couldn't get up. Oh, that was just scary. And then I said, that's it, you're going to the hospital, that's it. 
I said, get up, let mama help you get your dress, let's go. And to the hospital we went, right down the road. The nearest hospital was four and a half miles away. Quinn's parents loaded their son in the car and drove quickly through early morning traffic to Somerville Medical Center. They took him right in and started running a whole bunch of tests on him, you know, asking personal questions. And the lady called me a good 30 minutes later. She said, I need you to see something. By nightfall, the Quinn's world had changed. Their son had a brain tumor and needed immediate brain surgery. His athletic outlook was bleak. I remember laying in the hospital bed, uh, the nurse, and uh, I guess the nurse surgeon nurse came up to me and said my athletic career was over. He would never play football again because they would have to put a shunt, you know, in the back of his head. And me playing sports or doing sports for so long, I just like broke, man. Like I was, I was in tears. Like I looked at my mom, you know, like why, like why me? I was just. He couldn't say nothing. And then after she leaves, he says, I'll never play football again. He said, I made it to the Shrine Ball. I made it to the All-American, uh, what is that, the US Army All-American. I can't go to none of that. And then he just broke down. I've never seen Robert cry. And when they told me that he was crying, that made me cry, you know, so. I always told him I'd be behind him if anything got taken away from him, you know, so I have no idea what that would have done to him.